If powerful vehicles like the Saturn V and Space Shuttle have helped America become the world's leading country in the aerospace field, the ISS has been acting as shields to help America continue to maintain its position for many decades. However, at the end of this decade, it may end its life after more than 30 years of operation. This will create a large gap in NASA's space system, causing them to urgently find ways to fill it. But perhaps NASA's haste led to mistakes when deciding to award contracts to too many companies, wasting a lot of resources and capital, as well as time on unsustainable projects. Recently, one of those investments, Orbital Reef, led by Blue Origin and Sierra Space, is showing signs of collapse as the two companies no longer want to cooperate. Once again, we have to mention a familiar name, Blue Origin, a company famous for its slowness and has disappointed NASA many times in the past. This time, they they made NASA miserable again because of their incompetence and nonchalantness in the aforementioned space station project. So how did it come to this? And more importantly, what will the repercussions entail to NASA's space station plans? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The current space race is extremely fierce, especially the competition between the US and China. Besides competing to see whose rocket is stronger or who will reach the celestial bodies first, there is also a very important factor that determines victory in this race. The utilization and continued operation of a space station. However, the U.S. may face a big disadvantage. In the year 2030, the ISS may end its mission after more than 30 years in orbit. Of course, the U.S. and NASA will not let this happen. As in not having a space station, they're still going to retire the ISS one way or another. Fortunately, they have a huge advantage over other countries. Access to powerful private aerospace companies, and all in their backyard. With the help of those companies, building a new space station will be much easier than before. Therefore, NASA has awarded contracts to many companies to build space stations, such as Northrop Grumman, NanoRacks, and Axiom Space. However, the contract that received the most attention was the commercial LEO Destinations contract worth $130 million awarded to Blue Origin's Orbital Reef Project in cooperation with Sierra Space and several other companies and organizations. Investing in many projects will provide NASA with many options. However, it has a drawback causing a waste of time and money, as well as valuable resources through unsustainable projects projects or contractors who are not entirely serious. Perhaps a good example of this is the Orbital Reef. The Orbital Reef Project is a collaboration between many companies and organizations in which Blue Origin and Sierra Space will have a key role. Blue Origin, being the main contractor who is responsible for building the main module system and launch mission, while Sierra Space is the subcontractor, responsible for building the integrated module system and node module. Currently, Sierra is developing an inflatable module with the life system integrated inside. This is a new and unique method with great potential potential in the future. Their cooperation is expected to help create a new space station to replace the ISS which will help millions of people live and work in space to benefit the Earth. This space station is expected to become operational in 2027. However, weaknesses were quickly exposed. After nearly two years, it seems that Blue Origin and Sierra Space no longer want to cooperate on this project. Since announcing the collaboration on the space station project in 2021, both companies have had no information about joint activities. Sierra continues to develop its own module system while Blue Origin is struggling with other projects. They are having to deal with the consequences of their New Shepard project last year. To date, it has been more than a year and New Shepard has not been able to operate since then. They're also dealing with delays with the BE-4 engine. Even though it's been introduced a long time ago, BE-4 is still being tested day by day. Last June, it also exploded during a test causing its schedule as well as related projects to be delayed. And we must once again mention New Glenn, the vehicle that will play a main role in helping Blue Origin deploy this space station. However, as we all know, this vehicle has not been launched at all. Its future schedules are also very vague, which makes plans for the Orbital Reef project more deadlocked than ever. Besides internal issues, it seems that Blue Origin is paying more attention to the larger project, the Lunar Mission, after they receive 
received a contract worth $3.4 billion from NASA to develop the vehicle serving the mission of sending people to the moon. This leads to the focus shifting away from the Orbital Reef project. While Sierra Space is continuously making very positive progress with its system, Blue Origin has made almost no outstanding moves. However, they are in charge of the main structure in the Orbital Reef project, which means that if Blue Origin does not complete its work, the remaining partners will not be able to deploy other parts of this space station. Those are probably the reasons why Blue Origin and Sierra Space want to stop collaborating and find their own path. Even though NASA says the project can still proceed, we all understand that if the two main companies in the project really end their cooperation, the Orbital Reef project will be difficult to continue to progress, and the organization directly affected by this is none other than NASA. The problem of the Orbital Reef is the consequence of NASA's ill-considered decisions. It'll be even more serious than NASA thinks. And it's not just simply the collapse of one project, but it'll affect their entire space plan. After the Orbital Reef, other projects that NASA chooses may also collapse, much like this. And that's basically the gist of it, or perhaps there's more behind the scenes, because not everything will be an internal problem. As we all know, there is a space race between countries, and in this space race, at this very moment, many competitors are gradually emerging intending to take the US's leading position, of which the most ambitious is China. Similar to other aspects, the space station can also be said to be an aspect that shows China's great ambition to overthrow US domination. After being barred from joining the ISS, China built its own space station, the Tiangong, or Heavenly Palace as it's literally translated, and just with the name, we understand what China is trying to do. The Tiangong was created to compete directly with the ISS and help its nation become the strongest power in space. And just over a year since April of 2021, the Tiangong space station has been basically completed. If no station replaces the ISS after its retirement, the Tiangong will be the only space station in space in the future. That would be a huge threat to the US's future position. Therefore, NASA will need to seriously reconsider its space station plan. The orbital reef problem will be a valuable experience for them. They need to be more careful when considering and investing in the future. Instead of spending time and money on too many contractors, they should focus on capable contractors and truly feasible projects to avoid unexpected problems like this orbital reef project. They can focus on investing in the Axiom Space Station project. The advantage of this station is that it can be built onto the ISS, and after it's built, it'll separate from the ISS to self-operate. This will help NASA maintain the operation of the ISS until it retires and build a new space station to create an immediate continuation of the ISS. This project is also easy to implement because it's supported by vehicles such as SpaceX's Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Dragon. And we all know the stability and reliability of these vehicles. Or they can even consider investing in SpaceX. With their vehicles and facilities, they can completely build a space station faster than any company or organization today. But besides investment, NASA should also limit the strict regulations, especially with the Starship. That could help SpaceX quickly complete its goals, paving the way for helping NASA to develop its extremely urgent space plan. All of these things need to be considered and solved soon, because time is running out. There are around six years left until the ISS no longer exists in orbit. These six years will probably pass extremely quickly. Right now, everything will depend on NASA's decision. And how about you? What do you think of the Orbital Reef's recent problems? Do you believe that NASA can solve it soon? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the interesting space race, and if if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration, and as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.